Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 50th episode of RPG Horror Stories. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. It has been a long journey over the past six months. We've covered all sorts of horror stories, and today, I'm going to give you guys something special. No doubt you've noticed the video length. Here, we have compiled a mega collection of a bunch of the worst that guys I could find on the entire subreddit. And today, I'm going to read all of them! What could possibly go wrong? Make sure to stick around till the end. I have a very special surprise waiting for you. Without further ado, let's get started. I don't normally post or try to complain about another player, but this guy is starting to irk me. He's a that guy alright, but he is also the DM's brother. It's like he reads all the posts and watches all the videos of that guy's and uses it as a how-to guide. He interrupts players, he's on his phone all the time, and he's causing distractions to distract other players. He's falling asleep during sessions, self-inserting in all situations. Trolly actions that hinder the party are included. And edgelording to the point where I can't tell if it's real or some elaborate plan to just annoy everybody. But recently we were playing Dragon Heist and I decided to try and play a Lokatha nature cleric pacifist. Pacifism, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not going to stop others from playing their characters, just merely giving them the option of being diplomatic. But during this campaign, it's been his personal mission to kill any animal we see, or during any fight if I'm trying to incapacitate a target, he makes it a point to brutally kill anyone I knock out. Either while I'm holding them, or right after and it's just leaving me a few options. Either I see this through and let my character delve into madness and let him beat the hell out of this dude, or swap it out for a more accommodating character, mostly because I just want to vent my frustrations. Join Monster of the Week game. Six player characters, more joining before the first session. First session comes, 13 player characters with 9 in the voice chat. Second session, 8 player characters, because people left. Attendance stabilizes. We're figuring out an extensive history for the town our game is set in. A lot of NPCs in this game with personal histories with each other and high power level. A few of us joke that we're the cleanup crew, playing the epilogue of another game. One month in, we join the voice chat for the day's session. I've sent you all a link to the server. Join its voice chat. It's the server for another game. We were right. There are 21 PCs in this game already. Some of the players are playing five different player characters. They've been playing for a year. The games stay merged and our group has to start playing on a different day. When we were 15, my older brother introduced my boyfriend and myself to Dungeons and Dragons. We played with his people, they were all 4-5 to five years older than us. For both of us, it was our first time making characters, so we made the most basic fighter and rogue. Myself playing the rogue. The DM, my bro's girlfriend at the time, ran us through a typical quest experience. Picking up the quest, traveling, camping out, etc. It was all fun and games until the camping part. My boyfriend doing the typical guy thing was like, her der, I rolled to seduce my girlfriend. Now I know how to deal with player on player seduction, but back then I had no idea. But the way the table played last night was not the way it should ever be played out and even I knew that at the time. So the DM allowed it. He rolled to seduce, got fairly decent, but his charisma was garbage. I was in a bratty mood. Sure, I love him, but my rogue Crystal? Nah, she just met the dude. Gross. I vocalized loudly how Crystal won't accept. My boyfriend looked a little disappointed, but the real issue was this other dude. He argues that because the dice roll was good, I had to accept. We looked at the DM, who calls me to roll to resist. I roll lower than my boyfriend, but because I'm playing the charming rogue, my charisma beats him. I triumphantly cheer. My boyfriend's looking a little embarrassed and nervous because he didn't expect such a small comment to lead to all this. However, this should have been settled right there. The other dude runs his mouth again. Technically, when a wizard casts a spell and rolls lower, the spell is still cast. It just fails. Or some such crap. It didn't even make sense. Sex is not a spell. Q 
QA debate between the three higher authorities on Dungeons and Dragons. My boyfriend and I were clueless and just sat there awkward and embarrassed while they argued the validity of the seduction. Then, against all odds, they settle on this gem of a conclusion. My character wasn't seduced, she was nearly... <sighs> Boy. That. Against my boyfriend's protests, they declare that since he had a good role, it succeeded, but because I rolled to resist, it means his success was turned into a failure. I don't know, none of that crap made any sense. I was just so over it. Just, okay, fine, whatever, as long as I didn't sleep with him. My boyfriend was still mortified and stunned into silence. They moved on with the night, and for the rest of the campaign, his character was known as... You know... I was so embarrassed, I didn't even notice at the moment, but that almost killed his fun for the game. Almost? What do you mean, almost? Anyway, it was also embarrassing for me, but it didn't bother me that much. But they made fun of him for it almost every session. It ruined any chance of character development between our characters because the cloud of, hey, remember when that dude tried to R you? was always hanging above our heads. And this is without acknowledging any of the trauma that both he and I had experienced. Being put in the position of abuser was really rattling to his psyche. The group as a whole was really mean to him. He also didn't specify clothes when he bought equipment, so they said it was because his character was so dumb he forgot to buy pants. No matter what he did, that one guy just had to knock him down a peg, and the rest of the group was happy to follow. Even I did this before I realized how he felt about it. We almost never played another campaign until I decided to learn to DM one day and we realized how bad that group was at rules and all that. They were also just bad at, at being good people. You know, that too. Anyway, now we're long since adults and he is my favorite DM. Short story, because I remember like half of it as I was 12 at the time. We were at our final months of primary school. That very day, my friends Green, Newt, Rocco, and myself got into D&D. We were kids, so we played our version of it. Saying it was fast and loose is an understatement. So at our final months in school, we had literally nothing to do, and our teachers let us BS around as long as we kept it civil. We did our best. We took the game to school at some point, and we showed it to some other kids, and it became an overnight sensation. So much so that we played at a rotating roster of about 10 players. It was messy at best. Then, it happened. We had two classmates, Eddie and Marcellus. They were rivals. Marcellus is a bit of a bitch. <laughs> I want to put a Pulp Fiction reference in here so badly, but I won't get copyrighted. And he's a bit of a tattletale. And Eddie was a serial year repeater, so he was like 14 at the time. They hated each other. I was DMing that day, and for some reason, Marcellus and Eddie began PvP. I think it was for loot, but I don't remember well. What I do remember is that Marcellus killed Eddie's character, and then took a big old dump on his corpse. Eddie threw a punch at Marcellus across the table and missed. Marcellus fled. Eddie chased and eventually got him. He kicked him in the knee and landed a descending punch in his mouth. Then teachers intervened and we surveyed the mess. Marcellus's mouth was bleeding like crap and Eddie's hand was swollen. We saw that Marcellus's entire tooth, root and all, was lying on the floor in a pool of blood. Aftermath. Both got suspended. As was custom with fistfights at our school, Marcellus lost a tooth and Eddie broke his hand, spent summer with his hand in the cast, and failed yet another year. Never saw the two of them again after that, but if I had to guess, Eddie is in jail and Marcellus is still a little bitch. I just met my first edgelord in the wild, in an LFG game found recently. He, the player, was playing a teen girl that was more or less like this. Very socially recluse, smelling like garbage because she never cleaned up, ate like a 300 pound orc barbarian would, didn't want to talk or do the job we were doing, it was the introduction to Lost Minds of Fendelver, and everything said in character sounded like what a teenager would say on the morning after a heavy night of drinking, with an extra side of edge on top of all that. 
please. Now add in your mind a bit more creepiness to all this and a low key bass voice of a grown ass adult man, not even trying to sound like a young girl would. Not that having any kind of modified voice would mellow out the assholiness of this character, he breathed oxygen in and exhaled out edginess. Funny thing is, the token used was of a very beautiful anime girl, completely clean. He was practically attacking the enemies out of disgust, and wanted nothing to do with the group. It's very hard to do a character that's emotionally tormented and would fit in a Hot Topic ad without irritating your group. He couldn't do it. He was a big part of me leaving after two sessions. I left a thank you to the players in the DM, but asked the character slash player specifically to be careful and try not to cut themselves on all that edge. This is going to be a shorter story and it's from quite a long time ago. I'm nearly 30 and this happened in high school. In high school, we had a gaming club that I was in from freshman year to senior year. Sometimes we played board games, sometimes we played Magic the Gathering, but some people introduced me to Dungeons & Dragons 3.5, and that usually ended up what I played most weeks after school. Most of the other players were older boys while I was a freshman girl. The guys ended up inviting me to join a campaign they were having outside of school. It was an evil campaign and it was going to be quote, really fun, and it started out really fun. I was a bard, an evil bard, and I was enjoying myself. Of course, some of the evil characters were going too far from my liking, like making art out of dead people we killed and using babies as human shields, but I felt included, so I tolerated it. And then it started getting uncomfortable. Babies as human shields isn't uncomfortable? Part of the quest that we had was stealing a sentient necklace and taking it to another location. The necklace refused to come with us and was going to curse us unless my character was the one who wore it. The DM ruled that the gemstone on the necklace sat right inside my character's cleavage and the DM, as the necklace, was constantly remarking on how nice my character's boobs were and how comfortable it was there. Why? This went on for several sessions. As the other guys playing were laughing along with the DM, I was very uncomfortable with it because I didn't speak up because I was 14 and these were 17 and 18 year olds. Eventually the session stopped because of final exams and scheduling conflicts, but every single time while we had the necklace, there would be comments about my character's boobs. The story does have somewhat of a happy ending, the next school year, this DM was in college, and one other girl joined the group, and the next campaign I was in went a lot better, even though the other guys were still there. Are anime cat girls allowed? No. Literally 1984! I fully acknowledge that this is a petty complaint in comparison to other stories on here, but hey, I need to vent and maybe you need a break from the revolving bag of douchebags. My friend is a big fan of the found family trope. Actually, perhaps it would be better to say that she is a big enforcer of the found family trope. We've played in a few different campaigns and one shots and such together and without fail, like it's on a timer her character will be fondly referring to the party as the family she never had, a session or two into the game. Not the most annoying thing you say? Well, maybe not the first time, but it just keeps happening. No matter the circumstances, her character, the other party character... Look, here, let me give you an example. Long form campaign, most of the party is together to face a common foe, and there are some strong interpersonal clashes when we're not on the job. They've known each other in game for about a month. It's interesting roleplay. I'm playing a zealot who denounces anyone not with her as naive or evil. Another party member finds me insufferable and hypocritical. Really interesting interactions between the two. They value each other as fighters, but really dislike each other as people. My zealot is eventually put in a position where she has to reveal a critical backstory element to warn about an oncoming danger, basically why she is a zealot. The mood is tense and serious, even her rival being uncharacteristically silent and respectful of how hard this must be to talk about. And then, my friend's character tearfully speaks up about how it's so sad that she lost her family, but it's okay because... We're all your family now and we'll make sure you heal, so stop being so full of hate. 
And this kind of goes over like a lead balloon because, I mean, we've known each other for about a month and a tragic backstory is not an excuse for the zealot's bad behavior. My zealot's bad behavior, meaning the other two characters, ESP the rival, do not suddenly think of us all as family and this really feels weird and stilted. This isn't her character being naive, this is her thinking this was the best possible thing anyone could have said in the moment. When Zealot was dismissive and derisive of this in character, the player got visibly deflated and confused she hadn't just magically fixed the party. Another time, a character died like maybe five sessions in. In character, they'd known this person for about a week. My friend describes her character weeping and wailing because she basically just lost a sister which was just awkward and distracting at best, you know? It kind of cheapened the whole moment with this really trite, insincere declaration of affection for this weird witch she had just had some snarky conversations with. Now what set me off on this rant was our most recent campaign. I'm playing a ranger and we had that classic owl bear baby scenario come up. My character isn't into killing innocents, another party member argues it's a threat to the nearby town. The confrontation escalates with my character grabbing the cub and booking it, prompting a chase scene. One player takes my side, but my friend takes the side of the hunter. She's playing a fighter and catches up to me. It's worth noting that at this point, we all have gone for non-lethal attacks only, since the party has been friendly before this. Her character, a barbarian, does not do this, opting for a full lethal swing given an attack of opportunity. I confirm with her she is attempting to harm. She says yes. Okay, fair enough. The situation ended up with my character getting away and handing over the cub to a druid, something the party begrudgingly accepted. Next session, we reunite the party in town and get to talking about how it went down and dealing with the consequences of that. And you guessed it, friend's character is so upset at my ranger for turning against them. Don't I know the most important thing is... <gasps> To which my ranger flatly points out, hey, he never sought to harm anyone, just protect the innocent owlbear. He doesn't want to hear about family from the person who just tried to jam a sword in his throat. The player then broke character to out of character insists that that never happened because her character couldn't possibly want to harm her friend slash family, except she did, and we all remember it, and I explicitly confirmed it because of the effort everyone was taking to be non-lethal. Then she wants to retcon it because we misunderstood her, an action that would make my ranger's approach back to the party look paranoid and petty. I insist on playing it out and say ranger will tolerate her but not trust her until she earns it. DM rules this as fair. Player accepts it but is clearly unhappy about it. After one session of her character sucking up to mine and getting nowhere, he's not very receptive to pretty words, unfortunately for her. The DM approaches me and says the player isn't having fun because of the group disharmony and could I possibly hurry along the lines of forgiveness? And I don't want to because that's the problem with her. We all love each other, play in these serious moments. It's cheap and insincere to throw it out there when people haven't earned it or when it isn't appropriate or to guilt trip me and try to wiggle out of consequences for your actions. It just sucks, you know? Want to be a bloodthirsty barbarian? Great, but if you try to kill my character, my character sure as hell gets to be miffed about it. I really enjoy emotional roleplay. Hell, I actually adore found family in media, but I swear to god, if my ranger dies, my next character is going to be a construct who thinks family is a weakness for biological life forms. Ohana means family to you, puny fleshbag. You make a super basic fighter, throw your 18 in strength, grab a power attack and two-hander, and someone at the table calls you a min-maxer. You ask if player X is injured and needs healing after a fight, and someone decides that they need to explain the abstraction of hit points, not just representing physical injury. I made a skill monkey character, great at persuasion and lore, decent at fighting. The group had no mage, so I asked the DM if I could make a mage instead. No, no, insists the DM. Your character is just what the group needs. It's a political campaign and lore and social skills will be very useful. The campaign starts. The world gets invaded by demons? What's that? They can only be damaged by magic? Not my problem, says the DM. You try to convince this army to help you against the doom of mankind. No, they're fanatics and they won't help. Alright, you try to get the city the fanatics are attacking to help you defeat the fanatics. No, they have no reason to trust you. You defeated the army of fanatics and tried to get the city to help you fight the army of demons trying to end the world. 
No, they want peace. You try to get magical weapons to fight the demons. Sorry, magic barrier. Yes, you understand how the magic barrier works, but no, you cannot deactivate it. You need magic for that. I must have rolled like 20 skill checks that session. None of them impacted the story in the least. I know this game better than anyone. I know my shit based on quite literally years of research and fact checking and pattern comparison. I might occasionally miss the odd detail, but I'm 100% confident that I have personally forgotten more information than most people have so much as bothered to learn. I give not a single shit what your opinion is on the state of my familiarity with the hellscape of a rule system. How many years of experience with 5th edition do you have, anyway? Genuine curiosity. Around 3-ish or 4-ish years. I don't remember when exactly I started playing, as it's a bit fuzzy. I joined a few games that never happened, during which my name was swapped to Blue Redacted over what it used to be. And then there was the server I joined to play for real. That I consider my official introduction to gameplay. But even before that server, I'd been going over the mechanics, especially the monster manual, still my favorite of the books, and learning how to play. But then I also play virtually every day for most of the days with few interruptions. My accumulation of information is constant, and it's been happening for longer than most people have so much as bothered paying attention to the game at all. I bet my soul on having a better understanding of this system than 99% of people involved with it. And yes, that includes Crawford and his vague contradictory BS. I'm not just some ignorant idiot tossing his weight around. I legitimately understand what I'm talking about. I seem to return to the sub more often than is healthy. I don't know if this is even worth posting about, but eh. I joined another one shot on Friday and on the surface it seemed okay. Short little adventure in a homebrew setting. Cool, cool. I had the idea for a bear folk, forest knight themed paladin and asked the DM if there were bear folk in his setting or whether he could use some homebrew content I had. He'd already approved a homebrew gunslinger class for another player, so I assumed that meant he was at least open to discussion. In the events that he declined no biggie, I could just make the character a shifter instead. The dude goes off on me, saying he doesn't want furries- Oh no. I said the furry word. Do you think Den of the Drake heard that? I hear he's really in tune with the community. I think we're in the clear. <laughs> Okay, anyway, the guy makes a couple of lovely sexist remarks, and before I can say, okay, I'll just make the shifter, he blocks me from the game and blocked me on Discord in Roll20. I mean, alright, guess the trash took itself out. The gunslinger player messaged me to let me know that the rest of the players were not okay, and at least three of the other four just bailed. I have a very impatient player. We thought that he was just playing to, uh, doesn't suffer fool's personality, which is on his character sheet. No, it turns out he just doesn't want to roleplay at all. He just emailed me to say that five minute conversations between other PCs and NPCs were too long. And could I please do something to shorten that up and stop wasting his time? Just say one or two sentences, then have us roll to see what we learn. I responded with a polite no. I know that this isn't that bad of a horror story as some of the other posts on here, but I feel the need to vent. Two weeks ago, I started a campaign over Discord as the DM, playing Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus. Session Zero was alright, though stressful with making everyone's characters. I asked everyone the time that worked for them, and everyone agreed that 1pm going to 10pm, cancelling if necessary, was perfect. Man, that's a long game. Session 1 was the following week. I patiently sat in the voice chat for about an hour, DMing everyone to see if they would respond. Of the 10 people that were signed up, Two arrived on time. I messaged everyone, and the session started at two. The session was hard at first, with a lot of chatting, interruptions with siblings, etc. The first fight took three to four hours, with my mic dropping out every 20 minutes or so. Even with all that, I congratulated myself on having a fairly successful session with the people who joined, saying they had a blast. I told everyone that if we were to make this work, everyone needed to give me a day's notice if they weren't gonna make it to a session. If they were going to make it, they needed to be at least a little bit on time. 
Then comes yesterday. Four of my better players said they weren't going to make it to the session throughout the week. I understood, since some had doctor's appointments or had to work. What frustrates me is that with the remaining six, none told me they were going to miss the session. I thought they maybe forgot, so I waited until two, fearing a repeat of the first session. After that, I did some chores and played some video games while waiting for players to join. At five, I gave up. I get it, sometimes things happen like an appointment or work, but to the players who messaged me about that, I am grateful. But to these six others, it leaves me wondering if they care about the campaign. Six people is enough for an entire gaming group. Imagine no call, no showing to something you do for fun. This isn't so much one horror story as much as it is an anthology of small annoyances. I've been playing with random DMs for one-shot games and so forth for the better part of a year now, and one constant I see every week or two is the I'm an NPC who is going to be a total dick to you for no reason. Me, a large man in armor, good morning barkeep, you got any ale for sale? Who wants to know? I don't sell to your kind, now get lost. Okay, I'm human, and so are you, so I don't see what you mean by your kind. Adventurers? I hate them all. You're a tavern owner who hates their most lucrative customers? Okay. Five minutes later in the armory. Hello there, smithy. I'm looking for some climbing hooks. Do you happen to have any? Spit out what you want and get out of my shop, you motherless bastard. Wow, there's a lot of hostility in this town. The next day. Hello there, sir. You seem to be having a problem. You think I can't change a wagon wheel on my own? Your mother was a whore. Spits on me. You know, maybe her murder hobos have a point. Greetings. I apologize for perhaps picking you up at such a late time, but I was interested in joining your game of Fallout. It's 1pm in my country, so not too late at all. I felt like it was a better idea to contact you directly rather than by putting down a message that may be skipped over. Actually, it's much easier for me if everyone makes their applications on the same place. The Roll20 page. I see. But if you want to see the rules, I can send them through here to you. Well, the reason I contacted you was to pick up the place available over the other players since I have been seeking a game, any game, for the past two years without success. Two years of being refused is hard. Well, the best way is to write a really good Roll20 application. I do, but because I don't exactly fit into the whole LGBTQIA quota, I'm never accepted. Uh, quotas? As a matter of fact, most people give me the reason for not being accepted as me not being LGBT, which to me is exceptional. Okay, I'm starting to get a really good sense of why you can't get into a game. Been playing in a campaign that for the most part has been really fun with one exception. One character in the party is a young cat girl rogue that mysteriously always succeeds on her checks and always gets magical items that are geared towards her character. She also plays pranks on the rest of the party and messes with a lot of people. Didn't really mind it as the rest of the party is quite awesome. My character has pretty low perception so he never really catches her. Over the course of the campaign, my wizard has hilariously always beaten our paladin in contests of strength and has become really fun and honorable competition from time to time. The latest time, the paladin found the needed cocoon for the polymorph spell while we were out looking for it so I could cast the spell. She challenged my wizard to a sumo match for the cocoon, even though we all knew she was going to give it to my character anyways. It was just fun context for another contest. Well, we square off and the cat girl rogue darts in and decides to interfere. She pours some oil near my character's feet and for the first time in the campaign, I finally roll high enough to catch her mid-act. My wizard grabs her and furiously asks her why she's interfering with our honorable match and she says, Oh, well, you can't be mad at me. I'm the baby of the party. Like that somehow excuses that. My wizard grumbles and asks her not to do it again and then sets her back down and outside the ring. My wizard then hilariously wins against the paladin, praise to RN Jesus. The paladin then gives my wizard the cocoon and my wizard gets super excited as he has been unable to cast polymorph for quite a while even though he had learned the spell. He asks the paladin if she wants the honor of being the first party member to become a cool beast and she declines, stating that she wants my character to use it on himself. He says fair enough and at this point the rogue hops in, circling around my wizard begging to be turned into a mammoth. The wizard then smiles and says, 
No, that is your punishment, and then turns into a giant eagle. The bar of the party, who simps for the cat girl, tries to counterspell and fails. My wizard then flies into the bright blue sky, only to be struck by a bolt of lightning on a clear day and almost fall to his death. Gotta love being punished for not bowing to the rogue, eh? Why do we keep having to replace players every week? Well, let's see. The group slaughters goblins and kidnaps children to keep as pets. Group burns corpses in the middle of the street while the mayor is just a few feet away. Group backstabs NPCs that they allow to live after torturing them and their friend. Player states that the age of consent does not exist in D&D and excuses it by saying that their character is asexual. Oh, screw yourself. Another player brings up, well, in medieval times, they sold off 13-year-old girls for marriage in response. Nobody bats an eye after someone calls them out, saying that, Oh, looks like he scared the new guy. I played in this group for a couple of hours. I've seen too many horror stories to stick around, and so no telling what I could have missed. This player, who I knew through a mutual friend, asked me on a date, and I said yes. Leading up to the date, he mentioned he really wanted to get into D&D. He had watched people play and heard stories, so we sat down and made a character, and I said he could try it out with my group. I was the DEM, and everyone was cool with having him. The date went fine, but I wasn't interested romantically. He said no worries, but still wanted to play D&D. He had a blast first game, and all the other players really liked him. He joins our first game and was super active for a few months, then suddenly becomes very erratic. He'd not talk in chat and wouldn't join for games, show up randomly for games, and never let us know if he was showing up or not. He also started becoming an attention hog. He always wanted to go off and do his own thing and try and force my hand for his character and to have his character stuff happen now, right now. I sat him down and told him that the story is collaborative and that his story is being woven into the rest of everything else. He was unhappy things weren't going how he wanted and just wanted to fight his big bad already. Considering his big bad was a high level devil, there needed to be a whole quest to fight him. This seemed to have calmed him down a bit and he showed up consistently again. Then I brought my boyfriend to join, who's now my husband, and then this guy becomes even more erratic and won't talk to anyone in the party. Instead, going to drink at bars slash ignoring the party and getting super angry he missed combat or story points. After a particular game when he was worse than usual, I reached out again and explained that this was a collaborative game and told him he needed to work with them, that he can't just force the story and his character to be whatever it is he wants. He never replied and ghosted everyone. I tried to reach out a couple more times and never heard anything again, so I booted him from the game. We are still playing to this day, this was a couple years ago. This might be a little long because a few things happened during the campaign. First off, for the longest time, I was the only girl in the party of seven. Although this isn't dramatic or as awful as other stories, it still makes me angry when I think about it. About three years ago, I made a post on Instagram offering to DM 5th edition for anyone that was interested because my previous party had split up after leaving college. I was quickly approached by an old high school friend, Jack, who said he had a group gathered. I was welcome to come and meet everyone and decide if we all got on well. Jack was always very sweet in high school, so I agreed and we all met at his flat that weekend to play a few non-D&D related games together and get pizza. After a few hours, we start talking about character ideas, rules, etc. I suggested we talk about our boundaries in-game so everyone knew what we were getting into. I'm a relaxed DM, I don't mind if a player decides they want to sleep with a barmaid as long as it doesn't screw with the game. The only thing I said I would not do, period, was, you know, R. Everything else is at the discretion of everyone. This is important to know. Fast forward to everyone playing. I'm not sure if other people have done this before, but I ran the Death House part of Curse of Strahd about four sessions in. This was until everyone was comfortable together, and then I homebrewed the campaign after that. The guys were all pretty great up until this point. However, one of them, we'll call him Mike, began to make a few awkward comments towards me. Mike decided to take Bard and took my I don't care if you hook up with NPCs thing very seriously. He tried to hook up with every single female NPC. It got to the point where I had to speak to him out of game. He got very passive aggressive by telling me that I had already said it's okay. Despite this, he did calm down a bit and we continued playing. A few sessions later, Mike tries to, you know, R a female orc while she's restrained and unconscious the party were elsewhere. I'm not even sure of his motive here. 
but he just tried to make the explanation of his causes vague enough that they weren't specifically, you know, that, but obviously were anyways. I stopped the game immediately and told him that if he didn't quit it, he was out for the rest of the session. He laughed with his buddies and then stopped. Later that night, he sent me a hand-drawn picture of an orc, clearly modeled after myself, with his player grabbing her chest area. I told him that, that was not okay, not appropriate, and he was not welcome at the next session. The next day, he called me in tears, saying he was really sorry and had drank too much the night before. He also admitted he had a crush on me, but didn't know how to convey it. I politely told him I was flattered, but not interested, and let him back into the party. The rest of the party had been trying to convince me to let him back into the game because he hadn't done that much wrong anyways. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Apart from that event, I had been having fun with the campaign. Mike is no longer a douchebag at that session. He's quiet, and one of the guys tells me that I embarrassed him, and he's now struggling to connect. Well, that's not my problem. Fast forward a few more weeks, and things are getting weird again. Two more members of the party have attempted to ask me out on dates. I once again politely decline and carry on. The sessions are now a little awkward for me because all of the guys are flirting with pretty much every female NPC I place in the game. Slowly but surely, within a week, another guy confesses his love to me. I'm no longer enjoying the session, so I plan on finishing up one more story branch and calling it a day with the campaign and leaving. Not even a day later, Jack sends me 20 screenshots from a private group chat of the boys. They literally had bets on who could sleep with me first. The entire group chat was discussing ways they could flirt or seduce me. A few screenshots of my own conversation between them, etc. It was so awful to look at because I thought these guys had actually been enjoying my games. But I was basically just there as a game myself. Jack told me he was incredibly sorry he hadn't said anything sooner and that he was about to pull out of the campaign because of them. I told the party over Discord that I knew what was going on and that I was disgusted and would not DM for them ever again. I think I added in that none of them were even close to being physically attractive to me and then I left. It's been a while since this happened, but I still haven't heard from any of those guys ever again. Alright, and that is all the stories I have for today. Quite a few, quite a few more than I usually do. 20 of the worst that guys I could find. I understand that going through all of those horror stories can be a bit of a downer. So here at the end, I want to lift your spirits a little bit. This has been a really wild journey for me. 50 episodes of RPG horror stories total. And you guys have been an awesome audience all the way through. I love doing just YouTube, but doing YouTube with you guys engaging with the content, it just makes it so much better. And now there are literally thousands of you guys watching these videos. I really can't wrap my head around it. My corner of the internet is still a small corner of the internet, but hey, it's our corner of the internet. It's our tavern, our story time area. And I've had a great time telling you guys these stories for the past, well, almost seven months now. There are so many people I want to thank. There are actually a few thousands of you that I want to thank, but I can't thank you all individually. However, I can thank you face to face. My name is Crispy. This is Crispy's Tavern. Until next time, farewell.